You know, sometimes we need a pick-me-up to make us realize that, at least here in America, I don't know about you guys elsewhere, but not everything is so bad. I mean, just think of the people in China. China's making new laws banning regular ass things, and it's getting crazy. I'm not even joking, if you're in China, you better not be wearing a burqa while watching porn on TikTok and checking out your crypto wallet, or else you're screwed. Muslim women can't wear things like burqas, or Muslim men in Xinjiang can't wear abnormal beards. I guess Jackson Galaxy would go to jail in China. <laughs> it's even more outlandish than that, I promise. You're not gonna believe what they're banning these days. You know, recently I've been getting a lot of weird emails and a lot of weird stuff was happening to me on the internet, and it felt like I was being targeted, and guess what? It turned out to be true. Today's video is brought to you by Guardio. Guardio is a browser extension that I can put my name behind. All you have to do is install it from the Chrome or Edge store and you get a free security scan. I mean, I was already getting weird emails and stuff that were making me kind of suspicious, but after I ran Guardio, I found that there were existing threats on my browser and you might have those too. After you complete the scan, you can continue on for a seven day free trial to remove those existing threats and you can actually enable real time protection. But you know what else is really cool? It actually offers phishing protection and harmful site blocking. So it actually goes out there and makes sure you're not going to that stuff in the beginning. Also, it finds out if you have any weird malicious extensions and it actually gets rid of them for you. Also, it lets you know if your information, your personal data, your privacy has been leaked out there on the internet. It alerts you real time. And it's not just one user. You can track five different email addresses with one membership, so you can share this around your family. So join over one million users that use Guardio right now. I'm one of them. Don't forget that if you go to guard.io slash laoi86, you're gonna get 20% off a monthly membership. So get Guardio now and protect your online browsing and information. Avoid installing malware and falling victim to scams and get real-time alerts when your information could be at risk. So if you want a clean and secure browsing experience, again, go to guard.io slash laoi86. You can click the link in the description as well. And you can check out their affordable premium plan for full protection. So what is China banning here now in 2023? Well, you have to know that China had this whole campaign about teaching their boys not to be sissy boys as they said. They actually banned this out of the curriculum. They made sure that, you know, men were taught to be masculine because they were worried that in future conflict, if there was a military conflict, that all these sissy boys that follow all these things like K-pop or anime or anything that doesn't really exude manliness, then their country would be under threat. So that was a big problem for them. So what if I told you that funnily enough, of course, when you go on the internet in China, you're going to be able to buy things like underwear, right? lingerie, things that normally women would buy, obviously are gonna have female models. They're gonna have women modeling women's lingerie. But in China, the Chinese government said that that was too pornographic, so they banned women from modeling women's lingerie because I guess it was you know, being used as a substitute for porn, which again, is banned in China. But the funny thing about that is that to counter this, they said, well, we still need people to put it on and we still need people to actually go out there and show it off. So what if we get men to do it instead? And that's exactly what happened. Men started modeling the lingerie and a lot of people thought this was not only hilarious, but it was a better way to kind of bring more eyes to your product because you're standing out, you're different, you're breaking that ban, right? At the same time, it's a massive slap in the face of the government, which is extremely homophobic and trying to push this very, very masculine view of how China needs to move forward while the rest of the world degrades into these feminine tendencies for their males, you know? It's absolutely hilarious to see how these bans just don't work because people will always find a way around it. You know what another funny thing is? Is that China banned ChatGPT, which I guess you could see. I mean, like it's a country with no freedom. I mean, they're not gonna allow somebody to go on ChatGPT and go look up what happened in Tiananmen Square. But the funny thing is, is they tried to replace it with their own called Ernie, 
which is Baidu's version of uh, ChatGPT. And everyone on the internet in China just started dying laughing because it was one of the worst tools ever. People started typing things in to try to make artwork, right? Yeah. So this, this one would be like a rival to Dali, uh, Dali 2 AI, right? Sure. So this one says, uh, draw a busy road. But in, mm -hmm. in Chinese it says, Ge wa chishui ma long de jia dao, right? Yes. So like a, a busy road. Directly translated would be a, uh, a water horse dragon road. Yeah. Which is kind of, that just means like a busy road yeah. right, in Chinese. What did it do? Well, it actually just made a watery road with a dragon on it. Sure, I put I put a real picture, pictorial demonstration of what it really meant. <laughs> what it should be on, on the side. Yeah. So it's being drew a, like a watery dragon. Being a bit too literal here. <laughs> right. First of all, we got to break down fantasy versus reality. If you watch any Chinese propaganda that's been floating around, keep in mind, they have a multi-billion-dollar budget for this project called Tell China Story Well, or in other words, Jiang Hao Zhong Wo Gu Shi. And if you only paid attention to their propaganda, you'd probably think that China's pretty rad. All those shiny cities, all that utopian infrastructure, all those high-speed rails. As someone that lived in China for over a decade, myself, I'm happy to tell you that China is indeed pretty rad. But it's gotten really freaking bad. It's not the same China from 10, 20 years ago. It's become pretty freaking dystopian. Now, if you're a nerdy-ass weirdo like myself that loves statistics, you might be very displeased to find out something about our very own U.S. of A. You might be displeased to find out that we've dropped on average about one point each year in the Freedom Index since 2017. So if you look at the Freedom Index score, uh, I think around 2017, we're at an 89 out of 100. Pretty good. Now we're at about an 83 out of 100. That's not too bad, is it? I mean, think about it like this. We started high. Think about it if you were like a kid bringing home your report card. Now, if you're America, you'd be coming home from school and be like, mom, I got an 83 on my test. And she might be like, all right, that's a B minus, but hey, it's not too bad. Let's try a little harder next time, Joe. Let's call him Joe. What about China? Imagine he comes home from school with a China report card. <laughs> Now, if we're looking at it from the perspective of a freedom index, from the human freedom index, your mom would say, how'd you do on your report card, Joe? Well, this time with a Z-H-O-U. Yikes. Nine out of 100. Not 90. Nine. Not nine out of 10. Nine out of 100. <laughs> it's not good. That's bad vibes, dude. <laughs> Real bad vibes, because this is not about your math test. This is about your freedom index. This is about how many rights you have. This is about what Chinese people can do in their own country. Bro, if I had China's freedom index as my grade, I'd be delaying showing that shit to my parents as long as possible. <laughs> I'd be waiting until my teacher was calling my parents at home, being like, has Joe brought his report card home yet? <laughs> and my mom would be like that mom on the phone, you know, with Ralphie's mom in A Christmas Story. Anyway, why is China getting so bad? Why is it getting so strict? I and mean, we've got to talk about the stuff that they're banning. You're not going to believe this. Well, it's, it's Xi Jinping. It's the current dictator of China. By the way, don't fall for this bullshit that he's China's president. He's not a president. He's not elected. Unless you call an election over 2,000 votes from within the internal party itself a democracy, Xi Jinping declared himself dictator. He removed those term limits. Winnie the Pooh became Winnie the Pooh for life. Oh, sorry, scratch that. Comparing him to Winnie the Pooh is actually banned. Seriously, I'm sure you know that. Anyway, China has banned stuff and it's gotten progressively stupider. You might not know this, but a little while ago, a few years back, they actually banned showing time travel in media or TV shows or online videos or posts. Anything online was not allowed to show time travel because you're not allowed to promote, as they say, negative thoughts and untruths. Apparently, time travel showed a very rosy past of China, which made people compare that, you know, beautiful, dynastical, flowing robes of Chinese culture with today's very, very ugly present. No worries, though. Even though those were untruths and they banned the time travel thing, you could still show Chinese soldiers throwing grenades into Japanese airplanes and one single communist Chinese soldier taking down an entire battalion of silly, stupid Japanese soldiers. That was allowed, and still is. Anyway, it got dumber, like way dumber. Cause then China banned blood. And I'm talking about like in anime or like cartoons. 
If you think about this, you might see a scene where some dude chops another dude with a sword or guns someone down or whatever. You can imagine the shock that some Chinese viewers had when the Chinese government went out of their way to go and ban blood. Because these Chinese users were going out to their favorite pirate website, pirating their favorite anime on Billy Billy or whatever, because YouTube is banned in China too. And instead of the characters covered in that red stuff that runs through your veins, they looked like, well, they were covered in some stuff that you might have, or some of us might have, running through a different vein, so to speak. Anyway, <laughs> that might lead you on to thinking about something like Cornhub. And Cornhub is, in fact, illegal in China. In fact, all corn is illegal in China. Of course, people have creative ways of finding ways around this, but you can go to jail for looking at corn. And you can definitely go to jail if you use a VPN to go over the Great Firewall of China to look at that corn. What about video games? Let's talk about video games a little bit. I remember my mom would time me for 30 minutes per day. I'd be playing some shit like uh, Chips Challenge. I don't know if you guys remember that game. Anyway, <laughs> I'll throw a little clip in here. I'd sneak into the kitchen because what she would do is she would use the oven timer, you know, like a baking timer and she'd set it for like 30 minutes a day. And I'd go in there, and when she was out of the room, I would sneak like five more minutes on there, 10 more minutes on there, and uh, <laughs> add a few minutes at a time. Now imagine you as a parent, you know, I'm a parent now, you don't have to worry about your asshole kid breaking the rules and going and changing the oven timer anymore because the government, the Chinese government specifically, can do it for you. They perceived this big problem with internet addiction, not only internet addiction, but like video game addiction. So what they were doing, was noticing that some people were like dying in internet cafes because they're playing too much without eating or drinking or sleeping. But that really wasn't why the government banned video games. They didn't want their populace to become like less productive. It's that whole kind of like work for the greater good of the party bullshit. Anyway, after they tried to open these like internet addiction camps, they actually were forcing kids to go into these things and getting electroshock therapy. <laughs> I'm not joking. After those failed, uh, trying to place limits on the amount of time that minors can play video games, basically. So it comes up and says, like, you've your allotted time is over. The, you know, glory to Xi Jinping and the Communist Party of China. Anyway, clever people, of course. Chinese people, very pragmatic. They found ways to use other people's, like, ID cards to buy time. And people, like, illicitly sell or illegally sell their uh, video game time on Taobao, which is kind of like Amazon for China. Anyway, moving on, I really hope you hate money. Don't you hate money? Because cryptocurrency is banned in China. I know that China likes to paint itself as some technological forward, amazing 5G AI bullshit ass country, but it's actually funny because they banned all crypto. It's also kind of ironic because pretty much all the crypto scams you see come online are coming from China, <laughs> or at least Chinese people in different countries operating these crypto scams. That shit gets real dark, by the way, if you look it up. Anyway, you know those scams where people are trying to get you to invest in some cryptocurrency? All cryptocurrency is actually banned in China. China straight up banned crypto. Why? Because Chinese people are like, holy shit, we can finally get our money out of this godforsaken country that gives us zero financial security. For a communist country, China certainly doesn't offer financial security for their citizens. In fact, one of the first things people do when they get money is get it the hell out. For real though, it keeps getting worse. In the last few months of 2022, over $16 billion flowed out of China just from people trying to get their money out. People are not trying to get their money in China. They're trying to get it out into the US. The free paradise of China. Not only has billions of dollars flying out left and right, despite massive fines and penalties and laws preventing it from happening, but also with people themselves leaving. You should see the lines in China right now at the American embassies of people trying to get out. Millions of people are trying to flee. They're trying to get out of China and come to America. What happened to this utopian state where everybody wants to stay in China now? China has become so wealthy and powerful that they just want to stay. They're not going to leave anymore. Well, that's absolute bullshit. Millions of people are trying to leave. In fact, there's over a 900% increase in illegal border crossings of Chinese nationals trying to come over the Mexican border into the US. In fact, there's a great video about that from Serpent Zeta. You can click down in the description. Anyway, these people are rushing across the Mexican border into the U.S. And it's actually increased so much since dictator Winnie the Pooh, she himself, took over. In fact, since Xi Jinping took over, 
over 600,000 Chinese people have applied for asylum. That's just asylum, not people just trying to leave. That's just people trying to run away from the Communist Party of China. Now, we all know by now that Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and Instagram and YouTube and all these platforms, social media, websites, pretty much 70% of the internet, that's all blocked in China. The Great Firewall of China blocks all those things because, let's be honest, it's not a free country. Remember that nine out of 100 report card. Anyway, if you see any content being posted from China these days, and they're being posted on these block platforms, for example, if you see YouTube videos coming out of China now, if you see tweets coming out of China, these are most likely state-allowed propaganda. So they're like crafted propaganda for you to see so that you think China's a good place. Why are they so scared of letting their own people see all that cool-ass stuff out there? Like, it's just the internet. Why are you preventing your people from seeing it? The craziest thing is that a lot of people don't realize this, but China actually banned TikTok. I'm not joking, I know it sounds weird, but the app that comes from China is actually called Douyin, and Douyin is China's version of TikTok, and that's alive and well. But the one that you probably use or the one that you probably know about is the American one or the international one, we can call it. That's banned in China, and why? Well, what if I told you that from some reports, it seems that China has crafted a malicious algorithm that feeds the most negative content to users abroad and promotes bad and destructive behavior that causes kids to do bad things or go down dark paths. And what if I told you that in China, they ban that algorithm and they have their own algorithm, which seems to promote positive things to their society. Quite literally a psyop Tool of war, in my opinion. Anyway, after people started questioning why China banned TikTok but allowed their own version to proliferate, China ran a propaganda campaign to deny that TikTok was banned in China. Even fact-checking site Snopes, you know, Snopes.com, they went out of their way to say that TikTok was not banned in China. I actually covered this on my live show, The China Show, and afterwards, after I ran that report, they updated their report from false TikTok is not banned in China, to unproven. Well, it's not just unproven, Snopes. In fact, I'll write a letter. Dear Snopes, you don't have to say it's unproven. It's literally blocked. The Chinese government blocks TikTok. You don't have to go to China to find out. You can literally go to websites that tell you if a website is blocked in China. If you type in TikTok.com in one of these websites, it shows that on Chinese servers in China, TikTok.com is blocked. So we don't need to say it's unproven, it's proven. It's done, change it. When you step out of line as a Muslim minority in Xinjiang, they'll throw you into a concentration camp. And just a friendly reminder, China has over 1 million Uyghur minorities in concentration camps in Western China for stuff as minor as using a VPN or being in the same house as your uncle that was listening to a podcast about Islam. I'm not joking. There are people that are in prison, in concentration camps, for over 15 years for doing these things. The Chinese government does not like its minorities, that's for sure. Uh, it is so unbearable, unbearable uh, 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 Mihri Gultursun, the youngest of uh, those camp survivors, even begged the, the, the guards to kill her because she could not tolerate that torture, psychological, physical, even seeing the others being tortured. They have to chant slogans such as, who was your god? A new god, Xi Jinping. Ugh. Anyway, that fantastic interview was from episode 730 on uh, Jordan's show where he interviewed Yuri Turkle, which is fascinating. It's heartbreaking. I would get, either get a box of tissues or be ready for some emotional roller coaster stuff because the story of the Uyghurs in China is very, very sad. Check it out in the description below. While you're there, definitely check out his other shows. Jordan's interviewed me. He's interviewed Winston from Serpent ZA. His interviews are actually amazing. So definitely go check it out and uh, tell him that Lao86 sent you. Anyway, if China keeps banning shit, they will literally end up like North Korea. And in many ways, they already are. Keep in mind, the images and videos that you're seeing from China are manicured. They are shared and created with the sole purpose of whitewashing the Chinese government human rights abuses and deflecting from the malicious things that they're doing themselves like colonizing the world and militarizing places they shouldn't be and actively trying to harm societies and people in Western countries. China has become a hypocritical evil thief of a country under the current regime. China, 
Unless you bring your grades up, nobody will want to play with you. Anyway, very importantly, what I want you guys to know is that I do a live show every single Friday about China's current events. Uh, the funny stuff that's happening, the serious stuff that's happening. Talking to sources around the world with people on the ground in China, talking about what's happening and kind of making sense of what China's doing. I think it's really important that you guys go over to The China Show and watch every single Friday. Or if you can't make it live, you can watch it throughout the week. Definitely make sure you're subscribed to that. I'd really appreciate it. And don't forget, every single Monday, I have a secret show. I'm not even joking. I have a secret show on Patreon. And the patron show is called Xia Ban Ho. The link's down in the description. It's all the stuff that my buddy Winston and I can't talk about on YouTube. It's the kind of stuff that we can't make public. It's the kind of stuff that maybe you've asked us to talk about, but we can't put it out there. That is every Monday. It's definitely well worth it. It's called Xia Ban Ho, like I said, and I'd really appreciate it because it's the best way to support us.